All right, so the gospel speaks of Jesus' 40 days in the desert in preparation for his public ministry. And as illustrated by this image here, uh, it was not a time of fun and games for Jesus, those 40 days. Mark is very brief in his description of those 40 days. He says simply, he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. And that's it. That's Mark's account of Jesus' 40 days in the desert. Uh, whereas the, synoptic, the other synoptic gospels, Matthew and Luke, go into some detail about the temptations that Satan gave, if you recall. It's clear in those two other accounts that Jesus goes out there to engage and do battle, spiritual battle with Satan, the prince of this world. And you can see the deception and the crafty temptations to pride and to power and to uh, sensual desires that he places before Jesus there. But don't totally disregard Mark for seemingly not having much substance on Jesus' time in the desert because uh, to the one who knows the Hebrew scriptures, Mark packs a lot in the little that he states. Notice Mark says something very peculiar after he says that Jesus remained in the desert for 40 days tempted by Satan. He says that Jesus was among wild beasts and the ministers and the angels ministered to him. Isn't that a little strange? Why does he go out of his way to mention that Jesus was with wild beasts? To what is Mark perhaps alluding if you remember, Jesus is about the renewal of the human family. God the Father sends God the Son to become man and to become the new Adam. Adam means man, right? To become the new Adam. If you recall, where, where did Adam fail the first time around? He was in the garden the Garden of Eden, in, in contrast to the desert to which Jesus is now uh, called driven to, right? And as the book of Genesis states, Adam was with all the beasts of the earth. In fact, he was the one to name all of them. But none of them were fitting companions for Adam, that is, until God made woman, someone who finally was worthy of his love because she was his equal. But in the beginning, Adam too was among the beasts. And among those beasts, at least in appearance, was Satan. He had come in the form of a serpent to tempt Adam, and Adam failed the test, didn't he? He was defeated in that spiritual battle. And so when the new Adam comes, when God the Father sends his own son, he goes out not to the garden, but the desert that the earth had become, and there he was among wild beasts, among them being Satan. But this time, Jesus passes the test that Adam had failed. Jesus defeats Satan and conquers his temptations with what, if you remember, from the interplay between Jesus and Satan. Instead of succumbing to the wiles and intimidation of Satan, as Adam had done, Jesus overcomes those temptations with the force of God's truth and the power of his holy word. And so especially in this year, this bishop's year of the Bible, we need to follow our, our Lord Jesus and unleash the power of God's word in our own lives when we engage in spiritual battle with the demons that tempt us and cause us to fall. So that we are fashioned in the image of the new Adam rather than the old. When we were reborn in baptism, our eternal, de eternal destiny is now with him. And so we follow our master and commander, our Lord Jesus Christ, into these 40 days in the desert where we recapitulate as members of Christ's body that time of his 40 days in the desert into our 40 days that are before us now. That's precisely what these 40 days of Lent are about, to conquer the evil spirits of fear, of anxiety, of division, of pride, of lust, of greed, or whatever other vice that keeps Jesus Christ from utilizing us for the kingdom, for the work of the gospel. 
that's ahead of us. Just as Jesus did right after he emerged victorious uh, after those 40 days in the desert. He commenced his public ministry in full force. Right after our, our 40 days, after we, the body of Christ, uh, celebrate and receive the power of the resurrection at Easter, we go to work to proclaim the message that our society needs more than ever. The cry that we just heard from Jesus, repent and believe in the gospel. Maybe you haven't felt the urgency of Jesus' great commission that he gives you and me to go and make disciples. But if you haven't noticed, we're becoming completely rudderless as a society. Completely rudderless. I hope that the moral chaos in our world uh, today that we're facing helps wake us up to realize that we're not in Kansas anymore. That we need the saving message of the gospel. And that, that you realize just how you needed you are by your family and your friends, your parish, our Jackson community. Because as St. Paul reminds us, Jesus wants you and me to be Christ for others, to incarnate Christ in our present day, to be his ambassadors and heralds of the good news, to be a source of hope and light in a very dark world. So from this first Sunday of Lent to Holy Thursday, the beginning of the Easter Triduum, there are exactly 40 days. You know, back in the day, and I mean really way back in the day, the first millennium, Lent didn't begin uh, on Ash Wednesday. It used to begin on Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent. And back then, Lent was exactly 40 days until the beginning of the Easter Triduum on Holy Thursday. But when Pope Gregory the Great in the 6th century basically said, you know, we really shouldn't be fasting on Sundays during Lent because every Sunday, even those during Lent, it's a celebration of our Lord's resurrection. But after having said that, people still wanted a full 40 days of penance as Jesus had done in the desert. And so that's why the church, a couple centuries later, took time to develop added four days on the front end and Ash Wednesday was born. And they only added four days instead of six because Good Friday and Holy Saturday, though te not technically part of Lent, it's part of the Easter Triduum, which is a season in and of itself, they were still days of penance. So that's why they only added four instead of six. So there's some Catholic trivia for you. But anyway, I digress. The important question is, how will you spend your time in the desert and engage in spiritual battle so that we can become more like the new Adam rather than the old Adam who just kind of wilts and succumbs? I encourage you to use this very mass to discern and commit to how you will take up your cross and follow Jesus concretely this Lent of 2021. If, if you're at a loss as to a battle plan, I just want to offer a few ideas for your basic training, if you will, to go back to the basics, to be reminded of the basics. The spiritual weapons Jesus offers us during the Lenten season are threefold, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, All right? And I want to offer you some suggestions for that first element of the three, prayer for these 40 days. Number one, if, if you're not quite sure how to begin praying meditatively for, let's say, 20 minutes straight, a fantastic way to begin and foster a meditative prayer life is by praying the daily rosary. That way, your conscious mind is engaged in praying, you know, because many of those beginning the spiritual life are, are not used to just sitting there and soaking in God's presence. Right? They don't, they're not really sure how to receive what God wants for them. They're at a loss on how to begin listening to the silent interior voice of God, the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, maybe it's uncomfortable for you, or maybe you're, you feel like you're getting distracted, or you're not getting anything. But praying those Hail Marys helps keep your conscious mind focused. You can meditate on the mysteries for that day. And then use that as the springboard to, ha to have a silent interior conversation with God. 
as you're constantly taking that time, then you enter into a space where you can hear and get attuned to God's voice and the movement of the Spirit. In the midst of that prayer time, you may hear something that you know is not from yourself, something that you know is not a product of your own thinking or your own imagination. This is how God guides us, right? We can use our imagination for sure to engage in a spiritual conversation with God, but we do that only to keep our attention on him, to keep our ears open until he does speak directly to the depths of our heart and ministers to us and consoles us and illuminates us. See, a lot of it is simply giving God the time and a contemplative environment that focuses you and quiets your soul enough to be able to hear him. And the rosary helps you to do just that. You know, I was with a friend last month who is, is one of the many grandchildren of Art Rooney. And for those who don't know who Art Rooney is, he's the founder of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the Rooney family to this day owns that, that NFL team. And anyway, Brian was sharing with, with me a, a story of uh, his uncle, Dan Rooney. Uh, about Art's dedication to uh, the daily family rosary. In raising his children, Art made sure that the children developed a meditative disposition by making time for the family to just listen to God through the daily family rosary. And so around 6.45 every evening, the friends of the Rooney kids would start leaving why? Well, because their friends knew that at 7 p.m., all of the Rooney family was going to be play, praying the rosary, whether you liked it or not. And their kids' friends didn't want to get stuck praying the rosary with the Rooneys. So as Brian related it to me, the kids would just dread that time in the evening because it marked the end of playtime. But upon reflecting back, Dan shared that those uh, times of praying the rosary were the most cherished memories he had growing up. It brought the family together in the context of the larger family of God since they joined this, uh, the 7 p.m. family rosary that was on the radio. So they knew that it wasn't just them praying the rosary, but also many of the wider universal church across America. And... Uh, just last week, I was visiting another friend from my Steubenville days who now has seven kids. There's a, a picture of them right there. And just to show you the, that there's no twins in those seven kids, <laughs> the whole range, they're not done. And uh, the last time we saw each other was 15 years ago at my ordination when he only had one kid, Peter, there on the left. Anyway, he and his family aim for a daily family rosary, and he says they're batting about five out of seven each week because weekends tend to be more difficult with late, later night plans and whatnot. But it's impressive how the kids, even the teens, they all participate, they all know their mysteries, they all know the prayers, they lead the various ones, they, have, uh, they use the big screen to uh, pro project an image of the, that certain mystery, right? And so through this habit, the children know where to turn during difficult times, not to despair, that there is a greater power at work. And through that habit, they're also able to develop a more reflective outlook on life instead of being entranced all the time by stimuli and just keep on react, like, you know, just being beings of, uh, that are consumers, that just react to everything around us and never really developing an interior life. But instead, they, they actually think about, well, what's God's will in all of this? And they take the 20 minutes to do so each day. That's an instinct of going to God, right, and asking what God's will. That's an instinct the evil one wants to repress, and he's doing a good job of it because uh, it's not very well developed in our youth today. And it's an instinct he wants us to repress with all the distractions of the world so that we simply become reactive beings subject to being formed by the world and all that is put before our face and those values as opposed to being proactive ones 
who intentionally shape and form ourselves and, and the society around us for the good of the human family so that our actions are not reactive but come from the Holy Spirit working and active in our life. The habit of the, day of, of the rosary counteracts that uh, formation of the evil one, right? So St. Padre Pio has called the rosary, quote, a glorious weapon against Satan. And many saints and popes have echoed that. So pray the rosary daily. Uh, I challenge you for the next 40 days from today to Holy Thursday and allow Our Lady to begin teaching you how to pray more intimately with her son. And if you're unfamiliar on how to pray the rosary, if you have a Facebook account, you can join us each night during the season of Lent at 9 p.m. It's a little late on praying with the Padres. This can act like a safety net if you haven't prayed your rosary that day. All right? since it's BYOB, Bishop's Year of the Bible, we actually begin with a chapter of scripture per day and then go to the rosary. So you're probably looking at a 9-10 rosary. Uh, another suggestion to go back to the basics. If you're not a daily communicant, go to one more daily mass per week than what you're currently doing. Right? And since daily masses are only half, half an hour long, you know, there's time to stick around for silent contemplative prayer during those very holy 15 minutes upon receiving communion, when you're assimilating the Eucharist with your own, within your own body. You're one body with Jesus at that, in those 15 minutes, right? For those who work during regular work hours, our Tuesday evening 5.30 p.m. Mass might be the ticket for that uh, one daily Mass per week. So spend an hour, another basic in the spiritual life, spend an hour per week with the Lord in Eucharistic adoration at our Adoration Chapel. It's right behind our St. Joseph Church location on Waterloo. And this week's bulletin lets you know the hours that need to be filled, but you can also go whenever it's convenient for you. Uh, Cindy Smith's phone number is in there should you have any questions or need the combination for the door lock. There's also a doorbell, I think, there. And, uh, and a classic spiritual discipline during Lent, of course, uh, is the Stations of the Cross the, at 6 p.m. on Thursdays at St. Joseph and then 5.30 p.m. here on Fridays we have the Stations of the Cross. And a final suggestion for your consideration during these COVID times, think about creating your own Lenten small group. Right, Our parish small groups are currently filled right now, but that shouldn't stop you from asking uh, a small group of fellow parishioners from your neighborhood or whatnot to get together once a week and to watch a Seek 21 talk per week. Right? Maybe it's Bishop Barron's talk or Sister Miriam's talk or uh, Father Mike Schmitz's talk or, you know, there, there's, uh, we can, we have access to those Seek 21 talks for five more months. So just call or shoot an email to Shane Slough or to Joseph Gruber and we'll share with you how to access those talks as well as give you a heads up of, wh of which of the many talks are the best. So you can see there is no shortage of prayer opportunities to receive the grace, even in this COVID year, to receive the grace for doing spiritual battle with our demons. In conclusion, again, today marks the beginning of 40 days, our march to the Easter Triduum on Holy Thursday. How will you spend your time in the desert? Will you allow the devil, the things of this world, and our plain busyness tempt you out of the preparation we need as the body of Christ to minister to a hurting world? If we don't care to do so, you know, we really don't have too much of a right to, to be in a fuss or a rage over the moral chaos and division that afflicts our world. Because God has given us the remedy, right? He has ordained the church to be the universal sacrament of salvation. Because it's where, it's where they, people find Christ. So let's do this. Let's do our part in hastening that invasion of the kingdom of this strong man, Satan, by the more powerful kingdom of God. Let's take care of our little portion of Jackson County with which God has entrusted us 
and bring to it the hope of the good news, which springs eternal.